I think it's already been identified that there's a website for prayer ministries, and it already has materials there. Isn't that the logical place to go to find resources? Um, I would suggest that uh, if you've not already done this, and Karen, you've talked about already doing some of this, but I would pick out what are your top five resources that you use. You may have more than that, but take your top five and make sure that those go to Diane so that other people can have them. If everybody takes their top five, and quite frankly, maybe my top one or two work really well for me, but they may not work well for somebody else. And, and you might find something that somebody else is doing, you think, if I just changed it a little bit, then it would really be good. Well, it's really good for them, but for it to work for you, you might need to make that little switch. And you share some examples about what you do at camp meeting, and some, sometimes you take exist, existing resources, sometimes you create your own. And it might be something small, so you take your Bible promises that you didn't <clears throat> create, but you purchased them, and then you use them in a certain way by giving them to the kids to go around as a starting point for praying. Yeah, we had to end up getting 28,000 of them. Yeah, to get more. <laughs> so, so that worked really well for you, but for somebody but it's else... it's expensive, and I'll share with you that um, Michael Rowland and, and I have created Bible Promises. We have them on a disc, and people can go to that, that CD. So you have something that was too them, expensive. Download them, and they're free. I mean, you know, if you want to run them off in your color printer or your church, you can. Yeah, so you took something that was expensive and created your own. But they, they like the pop-up kind. It's like a Christmas present. So you have two different ways of doing yeah. it. Yeah. You have two different ways of doing it. You have a cheap way and you can have the expensive way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the expensive way. <laughs> um, I uh, created, I didn't create, but I suggested it, a prayer app for uh, the youth. Everybody's so into apps on their phone. So there's a section on the phone where you can actually have a reminder like people use it for medicine, uh, take my medicine, that's whatever. Sure. Time. So um, it's called pause and pray, and so uh, they can set up uh, whatever time they want, maybe every two hours, every four hours at six, whatever time, and they may have some things that they want to pray for. Uh, pray for my studies, pray for my family, pray for um, a situation. And so at this specified time, the reminder would come up, pause and pray. I sure. teach at a university, and I have a pray, a pause and pray. And I am teaching in the middle of the thing of my class. Up comes this little noise on my phone. Of course, I, I forgot to turn my phone off. But it reminded me that that was the time I had set for prayer. It was not a convenient time, so I had to switch the time and sure. that would not interrupt. So, so to create an app is kind of expensive, but there's it's already not an app you create. It's already on the smartphone. That's what I was going to say. So it's, it's just there, and you just uh, download, it. download it and set it up so that the phone would remind you pause and pray. So it would just pop up at the time, pause and pray. What I was trying to say is it costs a lot to create an app. You don't have to create an app. They are already out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's another one called Echo. Yeah. So there are, and, and some might like one better than another one. Mm -hmm. So again, I would ask, we, we've heard it, but I'll repeat it again. NADPrayerMinistries.org is the website. If you are willing to take your top five ideas and email them to Diane at NADPrayerMinistries.org at gmail.com then that can be available for other people mm -hmm. so if you're willing to do that we don't have the time now to have everybody share their five ideas we've had some ideas shared but funnel them to her and, and she will get those one more thing yes i have a question um i was on a youth and young adults advisory and uh one of the things we realized well is that we were apps done by adventists also one of the things i asked you today in the nad uh, Facebook page was do we have any podcasts mm. besides Amazing Facts who's using recordings from their actual videos so it's not the best um, you know not well organized um, but I think this is something that I would like to see and if there's any resources I would definitely like to share. Jesus 101 has podcasts and they're fantastic. Jesus 101? Yeah. Okay. Jesus 101 is an Adventist mm -hmm. app and yeah, she has podcast. an app too, and she has podcasts. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth studies. Talbert. Yeah, Elizabeth Talbert. Yeah, that's, that's Talbert. Elizabeth Talbert. Yeah. yeah. That's why yeah. Said that. Okay, so here's some more resources. Um, you need to understand that I'm a youth and young adult guy. 
my connection with James Black is from his years of being a youth and young adult director for the North American Division. So as he has transitioned to prayer ministries in doing this event, he tapped into one of the people that he's worked with before. So I'm not a prayer ministries coordinator. But that doesn't mean I'm not allowed to pray. Well, Amen. We're going to mention me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I do want to be teachable. I do want to be teachable. Um, I'll just list a couple of the resources I'm going to share with, uh, with Diane myself because I want to put this into practice what I'm saying you should do. So I'm going to send her five resources. And because I was given the microphone, I'm going to tell you my five, even though I asked you not to share yours. That's not fair. No, it's not fair. It's not fair. Number one. You become friends with James Black, you get your five minutes too. The book Steps to Christ was very pivotal in my life as a teen as a teen. I read it more than I read the Bible because it was smaller. Um, I find that young people rarely read the book now. Some of them don't even heard of it. And I think because it was impactful for me, I think it can be impactful for you. Um, isn't that natural? Whatever works for me, I, I think it's going to work for you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but I'm going to try to work it on you. I found that young people, when I give it to them, they still wouldn't read it. So I paraphrased it for them. And I took the 13 chapters and I broke each chapter into about six or eight little smaller sections and I did a daily devotional for them. And then ended that section with a question and then a prayer prompt. So they read this little section, just a, a daily devotional, a question to reflect on, and a prayer prompt. So uh, that's the book called Connection, How to Have a Relationship with God, it's a paraphrase of Steps to Christ in daily devotional format. Wonderful. Um, it's also available on CD. I will send that information to Diane. If you go on the Adventist Book Center website, you'll find it. It's there, both the hard copy. Let me, let me, let me, no, 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 you stay, because I, I want to piggyback you. This, this, is, this is not my time. This is not my time. No, 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 this is your time, but I think, I think this is good to say, because it, it's going to be soft, but kind of direct. Yesterday, um, uh, I brought uh, to, the, to the facility, uh, the, 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 the church, a table full of resources. You saw them out there? And, and my wife had set them up where some were free, you know, so you can kind of take some back. But some of those items were were just for review copy only, and uh, he had quite a few of those on there. And the book he's speaking about was there. Our names was in them. Okay, it was in them to let you know. Do you see it here? Just just to review, just review. So 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 here's a commercial. Here's a commercial for those of you in the room who possibly just kind of says, I thought they were free, uh, and you walked away with them because my wife said half of those resources are now gone, <laughs> and we can't take to other places now unless we kind of get a replenished. Just kind of look in the book back in front, and if you see his name or my name, we would appreciate if you would return. <laughs> um, the reason it was also on CD is that a lot of young people don't read. And so we have it in an audio format as well. Okay, another resource is um, called Let's Talk About Jesus. And it's a Bible study prompt. A lot of times Bible studies are geared to come up with the right answer. For example, which day of the week is the Sabbath? Do you know the answer to that one? And so you can find Bible passages that make that pretty evident. I would hate to try to prove that Sunday is the Sabbath. Because people didn't observe Sunday until after the Bible was finished. So it's really hard to go back and make the Bible say something it didn't say. But what is the best way to observe the Sabbath? Mm. Oh, well, that's, that's a better question. That's not quite as easy to come up with one right answer, is it? That's right. So these Bible study prompts are those kinds of questions with um, different options that get people thinking about it. It can be used individually, it can be used in groups. So it's 52 Bible studies called Let's Talk About Jesus. Have you ever heard of Advent Source? Yes. AdventSource.org. So they have that available. I think it's like $6.95 or something. I'm going to send that to Diane so she has it for the website as well. 
After those 52, there are then 10 different prayer experiences or prayer activities that you can do. So there's something that's more directly related to prayer. Um, I'll do one more resource because I'm running run out of time. And um, because I work with a lot of young people, frequently they have a hard time just dialoguing with one another, especially if they don't know each other. But they want to be able to do that, but I don't know what to say. How's your athlete's foot? Uh, or whatever, you know? Do you like this? So I just created a simple set of 52 cards. I mean, it starts out very superficial. My name is blank, but people just call me blank. And uh, I go first, and now you do the same thing. And the next question is, um, I live in, and now this time you go first. And by taking turns and answering the same question, if you have one dominant person, they won't control the conversation because the other person gets just as much time as you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you keep talking, um, my, my favorite food is, and you go start going deeper and deeper, and you say, uh, three of my strengths are, well, I guess I have to say what my strengths are, huh? You know what the next one is? Three of my weaknesses are, mm -hmm. and we start sharing this, and in 10 minutes, we're sharing more than I usually share with my friends. Mm -hmm. Well, I was on a prayer weekend with young people, and I was looking for resources. So I just grabbed this thing and had them do it in twos. And then I said, okay, let's go back and let's do it again. These things are just called, I'd like to get to know you. That's all it's called. I said, now after you've done it, I want you to go through again. And this time, don't answer for yourself. Answer the way you think God would answer it. You know your friend God? How, how would God answer this? Okay, my full name is... What, what is God's full name? But people just call me... How about this one? We're on the superficial level still. I live in... I live in heaven. I live in my heart. I live in... One of my favorite foods is... Uh, we're supposed to answer for God. You're behind your chance to answer for yourself. God loves chalk. You're supposed to answer for God. There we go, man. We always get man as one of these things. And you finish this. And I'll tell you, these are the two things I'm left with when I do it. Number one, God is very different than I am. The answers are not the same at all. And secondly, I thought I knew God. I don't feel like I do. And yet he wants to be intimate with us. So maybe a third thing is, I don't listen to him very often. But I do talk to him. Anyway, so those, those are just taking a resource that was not officially a prayer resource. And I have a friend who is a prayer ministry leader. And he took it and he used it. And then he was left without any of them because I guess people feel blessed by the Lord. So, yeah. Diane, I will send to you. Anybody else willing to send to Diane? Yeah. Okay. And then she'll go ahead and post those. Thank yeah, you. Send me that last one. Will you put right away because I'm having a prayer uh, no. breakfast next Sunday. And do I'd like French. to do that. Will you put the. Who's their son? Like it's from you? Uh, yeah, yeah, let her know. Let her know that it's from you. Yeah. So it's going to be in French. <laughs> if I send it to you, if I send it to you, you're free to translate it. Or better yet, better yet, type. Oh, it would be free for me. No, I guess it wouldn't be free for me. No, because I have to pay someone to do it. So would I have to pay somebody to do it? There are translations. Really? Where do I have my budget? My stuff gets stolen. <laughs> Paper, but it didn't get me <laughs> I can assure you. I, I can assure you. James is listening. 
And, and we're going to make sure that he's listening to that. Because I, I can hear the passion in your voice about the French community. Yes. And uh, uh, let's, just, let's just pray about that. Let's put it in his ear. And then let's see where that goes. Uh, before I move, you know, I know there's a passionate room full of resources and, and ideas and thoughts in here. I, I wish I could allow time for everybody to come up and share that. But if you have something that you want us to kind of reflect back on, two things you need to do for us. Let's, let's get it recorded, capture it on record, and if those documents or on books or whatever you have, feel free to, to share them with uh, myself or Kathy, because what we're going to do is when we travel around, we will put up a resource table, and your items will be on that resource table, and we're going to do what we used to do on the Youth and Young Adult side, dispatch someone to that table to make sure that those resources stay on that table, so we can carry them around wherever we're asked to go. So if you have those things, feel free to share those with us, and we'll make sure that those items, those tools, get on that table, and, and people can see the many things that you're doing out there. Yes. Mm. Because you did this to me, I'm going to do it right back to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I mentioned adventsource.org. If you go to that, and just in the search page, type in Steve Case, then you'll find all these resources too. Adventsource carries all of them. All right, all right, all right. Looking at the clock, uh, I know we're supposed to stop at 12.15, but we can keep going as long as you want to keep going, because I'm here. So people that need to step out, we understand that. You step out, we'll pray for you. I know that Deborah's going to have to step out because she's got another appointment. So what we're going to do, we're just going to pause right now and just pray for them. How about that? Amen. So then when she, when she just kind of got to slip out, she will slip out. And she's not slipping out on you. She's slipping out with us. Okay? So we're all together. All right? So let's see. You want to pray? Come, 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 come. come. Let's pray for them. She has an awesome responsibility, an awesome responsibility to our church ministry. Amen, amen. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, that you can take and, and put inside of our hearts your desires, Lord. We think about Philippians 2.13, Lord, from the Message Bible, it says that you'll put both your desire and the power to do what pleases you in our hearts. And so, Lord, I think about Deborah as she's... Um, doing the very best that she knows how, Lord, how to serve you, how to be filled with your Holy Spirit each day. And Lord, we just want to ask that your Spirit would continue to be with her, Lord, that you would take her and guide her feet where she needs to go, that you give her heavenly efficiency in her work, Lord, and that you would consistently remind her and all of us, Lord, that we no longer run the show, but that you do. Amen. And so, Lord, we humbly say, thy will not ours be done. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to flip here. Um, and just going to ask uh, Diane to come and just give an overview, Diane. Okay. Just an overview. We'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. Just an overview. She wants to speak to you about the all night uh, prayer call schedule. Okay. Mm -hmm. It used to be that Arusi Jacobson contacted you and scheduled your all night prayer call and timing. Well, that has fallen to me now. And I need your help <laughs> because um, we all have biz busy schedules. And so Jean Goba from the Alaskan Conference Prayer Coordinator, she recommended that we set a conference time, a half hour for your conference, and then you choose who you want to be on during that half hour that night. Because I know that you can't always be on that night. And so if you can schedule somebody, so if I can count on you to fill that slot for that half hour, mm -hmm. then you choose who you want to be on there. And what I want to do is have two conferences scheduled for that half hour. Because um, a couple months ago, I scheduled myself to be on at four. It's hard <coughs> for me to be on at 10 at night because I get up at five in the morning. But I figure I can get up an hour early for the prayer call. So I came on at four o'clock that morning and I was told that five slots, nobody showed up. Whoa. And so we have hosts that monitor for two hour sections and um, Karen is one of our monitors and uh, she's had to take over for that those half hour slots. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I want to do two conferences for each for each half hour. So if you're willing to do that, it would sure make my job a lot easier. And I what I would do is send out an email to you with the schedule of conferences, and then you can write back to me who's going to fill that half hour slot. If it's you or if it's somebody in your conference. Because I know that you have a lot of prayer warriors 
in different churches in your conference that can fill those slots for you. So I'm not saying, so we need to delegate. So, we, so I'm delegating to you to, to give me somebody for those half hour slots, then you can delegate somebody to fill those slots. So does that sound like a good idea for you? Well, I think it's an opportunity to cycle more people. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think of it as discipling when you appoint other people to do it that aren't doing it all the time because then they take ownership of that line also. But we have up to, I don't know how many people are on the call sometimes. Sometimes I come on at 10 or 11 and 12 o'clock at night and there's 60 people. Wow. And it's, it's powerful. Wow. And it'll, it'll drop to 30, but I've never seen it go below 30. And they're from all over North America and uh, Canada, there's some people from England, Guam, um, people call in. And it's fun because you learn their voices. Yeah. So delegate and mentor. Oh, okay. yeah. And some of the people are on all night. Amazing. <laughs> you know, this starts as an East Coast and then moves to West Coast kind of after midnight and yeah. comes back to East Coast with uh, Northern New England. Yeah. Um, it's also been fun this weekend to attach faces to voices. <laughs> yeah. Have you uh, met anybody on the prayer line that uh, you recognize? Uh, Warren Roof, yes? I've, I've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm concerned about locking conferences into slots because it will stymie the growth of the online prayer call. If there was a way that we could sign up for like three months or four months and then kind of reinvent the prayer calls to begin including new prayer leaders as they arise. One of the most positive things that the NAD uh, prayer call has been hearing new voices and, and hear from new places. Mm -hmm. If we lock the current group into the prayer call, that's going to die. Mm -hmm. So, and I think Ruthie uh, wanted to increase the coverage and, 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 and grow the ministry. The only way to grow the ministry is probably with, a, with um, someone who would be willing to take that responsibility of recruiting, essentially, new people. Hey, would you come on the line uh, on this first Thursday of, of uh, May or April? Uh, take a slot. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is a, a function of advisory because unions play, unions need to be, uh, are going to have to play a larger role in this. I understand the concept of advisory, I support it, but Ruthie bypassed unions essentially to grow the prayer ministry. It went straight to the conferences and she was, and, and her, and the strongest growth was not because of what unions were doing what she was doing. This may not be completely true on the West Coast. I'm just an East Coast observer. But uh, going back to the topic, I'm reluctant to volunteer, but somebody, somebody's, maybe another committee that would be responsible for the all-night prayer call. You, you retain the uh, position of secretary. It's a vital role. Because more people are going to be are going to forget if you're not there to remind us. But uh, we need some element to encourage the expansion of the ministry somehow, some way. And, and I agree. And I am open to suggestions because I tell you what, it's easy to fill this the first um, up to twelve o'clock mm -hmm. Eastern time. It's mm -hmm. easy. I have no problem getting in. Mm -hmm. It's from twelve to four that I have a really hard time. And I have to admit to you, I get stressed out yeah. because I'm down to the day before yeah. and I don't, I have empty slots. Right. And I, I don't know why I should get stressed out because I know it's in God's hands because he always fills those slots at the last minute. <laughs> but I still get stressed out. So I need your help. And so however you think that we can make this, because this is really important. Um, people count on this. Uh, there's a lot of people like with like Karen said, that come on there and they're looking forward to it. So this is something we need to do. So I'm, you know, you got my email. I'm open to suggestions. If you have any suggestions now, um, May, uh, April 5th is our next all-night prayer call. We have three weeks to get ready for the next one. Just a question. 
How frequently does this all night prayer call happen? Once a month. Once a month. Oh, every Thursday of every month. Yeah, okay. once a month. Yeah. And um, Kelly, she takes the 430 to 530 service slot. Oh, so. I believe it. <laughs> so she takes that slot, um, and she usually, uh, if she can't do it, then she has somebody from her team do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, one final comment, a field, a field report, pastors have been on from southern New England, they've not prayed, but they've told me they would like more praying and less reporting on the prayer line. Amen. So if we could reframe this a little bit, uh, we might even get more intercessors involved. I think that's a good point. Yeah, that, that's Absolutely. a good point. It's usually is whoever has a half hour slot, they choose what they want to do. I know. But um, what I'm trying to do is um, having Pastor Black give us a theme so that we can focus on a theme so that each half hour be focused. That's good. Um, the, the other thing I'd like to suggest is that people, in, in reference to what you just said about more prayer, people who do the segues into into the prayer times, stick to five minutes so that we have more time to pray for that 30 minutes. Sometimes people will talk for 20 minutes and we have no time to pray. And then other people start talking. So it's, it's a prayer line and we just need the segue, the scripture, the insight, and the, the promise, whatever, that goes with that and keep it to five minutes or less. Some will off 30 minutes. Some will take the whole time. Yeah, I'll take the whole time. How long to sing during the prayer time? Can you sing also? It's only oh, yes. You no, no. Yes. no, you can't because there are delays. Yes. Yes. There are delays in the lines. So when you're singing, you're just drowning everybody else out. So singing is not a productive function on this prayer line. Good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's right because I have a Tuesday morning prayer call and sometimes we end it with a song. And you have this. But, but it's only. Yeah, it's only a few of us on there. Right. I, I probably have one or two more points. Time, time out, time out, time out, time out. We, we've moved into a different discussion of resolve. Let's just continue with the overview, and then we'll come back at some other point in time with Diane, and then that group can sit down and kind of work through some of the resolve, okay? So any final comments on on, on the all-night prayer call, uh, scheduling with Diane? Well, I saw her hand. Ready? Yes, I, I, thought, I thought I saw you raise okay, your hand. No. Okay, okay, all right. All right. Okay. Well, one last thing I wanted to say is on the resources. I've been listening to each of you. I am not a conference prayer coordinator, but I am a church prayer coordinator. And I'm trying to get my church involved in prayer. And uh, I've been in the position over five years now. And I have more people are getting involved. I, it's not the whole church. And so I want the whole church. So what I would like to see, I like Michael, what you said about two people getting together and then inviting the third and then dividing up. I think that's an excellent idea. You, I get emails from people a lot where they've just been elected as the church prayer coordinator. What do I do? Yeah. So you know what I would like for you to do for me? Is if you would send me testimonies of what you have done or what churches in your conferences have done and how it's helped the church to become a praying church. I've got, I've got some things all set up for that. So if somebody wants to call me, that would be, I'd be happy to help them with that. Okay, great. Okay, so um, I need your help. I'm only as good as what yeah. you give to me. That's right. Right. You're wonderful. <laughs> we appreciate you. I see there's a lot of there's a lot of passion on the all night per oh, come, come Well on. just in, instead of her everyone calling her, can she put that with on, her on, on, on the, the site? Yes. Okay, on the site. The comment was can can you oh, just put it on the site that everybody can have that everybody can have access to it. So I see it's very passionate about the all night prep call. So Diane, we got to have more discussion on it because there's something. And I'm not trying to open up a can of worms because I'm going to toss it to, that, to to Deborah for a second. But I just want to put out there for your thinking. Maybe Helvius may I give him 30 seconds if you want to put there. I'm listening to it, but I didn't hear anything because I'm a youth and young adult guy too. I didn't hear anything about any youth and young adult uh, that was attached to this prayer call. We need them on that prayer call too, all night with you. Uh, you got you got a thought on that? Oh, okay, he says, he says no. But let's just keep that in our mind. So I, I would say let's put put that down. So when we we, we discuss this more further, let's make sure that that discussion is also part of it too. Okay, I, 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 I got thirty seconds on it. Okay, it's twenty seconds. 
each conference should appoint a, a young person per director, per ministries director, to manage the youth with the youth director in their conference. Okay, 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 okay. Actually, okay. actually. I give, you, I give you the other 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you just lost five. You're losing your time. Uh, we have a young adult and youth leader that is coordinating with prayer ministry, too, and they just had a, a young adult um, prayer conference, and there were 200 that came. All right. That's, that's perfect. I yeah. love that, love that, love that. Okay. Deborah, oh, anybody else? Okay. Deborah Brill. Well, I just wanted to ditto uh, the thanks. Diane has been an amazing leader for prayer ministries. Amen. Yeah, and to, to, to think, you know, she is a, she says, I'm a church prayer leader. Um, you know, she doesn't have a grand title, but we don't need grand titles. To, we, we just need people with purpose, with commitment, with love for Jesus. And Diane, I'm, I'm affirming you for that. Amen. And I just want to thank you for continuing to do this as we transitioned leadership. Uh, it really means a lot to I, us. I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, I was thinking this week, when did I start? It was 2008. And um, I, I, I loved it. And it's helped me in my prayer life. Mm -hmm. It has made a change for me. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. And I also just wanted to thank the hosts for our um, meetings this weekend. That would be Paulette and Kathy. Uh, you have just done a marvelous job of, of helping us from the NAD to make this happen this weekend. just want to thank you and say uh, how much it means to us that you both, and Kathy, where are you? Here you are. Thank you. I, you know, I. Excellent job. It, it takes a lot of energy to do this, and so I hope that you do get a little rest and downtime afterwards. Yeah. But just thank you for all you've done for us, for hosting us. Amen. And and I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you for uh, for doing things that uh, only God knows you do. <laughs> only God knows the the sacrifices that you make personally. You've left your homes. Uh, many of you this weekend. You've traveled far. Some of you. How many? Fifteen hours. I heard somebody drive. Who was that? <laughs> uh, That's when they were thinking about driving. <laughs> oh, well. 12 from Arkansas, but they just left. Okay, 12 from Arkansas. So they had some car 12 trouble. from Connecticut. 12 from Connecticut. 6 from Cleveland. 6 from Cleveland. 9. From Nine. Nine. I mean, this is amazing to me. I just... <laughs> I want to just thank you all for doing that. And we will pass this along to James. And believe me, he does now. He understands... Uh, you know, the, the commitment that you have. And just, you know, keep doing what you're doing and know that we are praying for you. Mm -hmm. Thank know you. that we are praying for you and that you are, um, you are precious to us. Mm -hmm. and, and especially to James. And if he were here, he would just be giving all of you big hugs of appreciation. So you have you've been sitting a long time. This isn't the closing prayer, but let's let's just stand together and uh, I'm going to pray for you. Our gracious and loving God, you are an amazing God, and we can't believe that you love us so much and that you have sacrificed your very life to save us. Father, we just want to now recommit ourselves to you in new ways in ways that maybe we have had an enlightening experience in this weekend to hear the stories, to see the d demonstrations of how you are working throughout this great division. I, I counted that there are over 20 different organizations represented just this weekend, Father. And, and Father, every church, every conference, every union, Father, these are just entities, but it's the people, Father, that make all of us all of these things work. So I just want to now ask a blessing on every person in this room, Father. You have called them all. You know them by name. You know their families. You know their circumstances. And Father, I just pray that you will bless them. Give them an abundance of your love and grace and peace and hope and give them vision now when they return to their places that you've entrusted their work, that you will give them courage that you will give them everything that they need. So, Father, I ask these things only in the name of our precious Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Goodbye. All right.
So are we are uh, okay to, to continue, or should we wrap up? We want to continue uh, uh, for, for just a little, while, a little while longer to kind of cover some of these items. Okay. All right. So again, we're going we're to kind of move fast, but also give an opportunity to stop, reflect, and contribute. Okay. Okay. We're going to move fast, but we're going to stop and give them, give everybody an opportunity. Uh, community prayer evangelism. If you remember now, we started with what houses of prayer. And then he added community to it, community houses of prayer. So now it's, it's kind of really, really kind of getting to the hardcore of community prayer evangelism. You heard me talk about, talk about, oh, what happened here? What happened here? There it is. Oh, I got I to come up here. I got to do something. You heard me talk about this yesterday, so let me just start here for a moment, and then uh, we'll toss it out to you guys for reflection and, and, and added value to it, uh, or takeaway, whatever the case may be. Uh, you saw this logo. Uh, several people came up uh, to some of the folk in the group, and they came up to me and said, hey, Paulette, uh, what does this logo mean? Yes, it, uh, uh, you saw it probably a lot on the youth and young adult side, but you got to understand that Pastor Black was what the youth and young adults a director, but when it came down to how it was developed, it was developed for uh, reaching the community, claiming Jesus to the community and to the world, and then prayer. So now it's just expand. So this is not like a youth and young adult logo that's coming to the adult side. So let's, let's first make sure we have clarity on that. This logo was established by him with that overall vision. So now he has an opportunity to now to share this vision uh, church worldwide. So I basically was just kind of giving some ideas, it's not ideas, but some thoughts on what the logo kind of meant so you kind of know what it means when people ask you. And then we'll add value to it. And then I, I just want to highlight the three points that you heard me say yesterday uh, from my phone uh, that Pastor Black sent me. He says, okay, af after Jesus saves us, we, so we personalize it, uh, we claim his power to, use, to be used as instruments of grace to share his love to the world. And I added there, I added there, and he, he allowed me to add it there. If you go to your North American Division uh, strategic plan and things of this nature, two big things that they talk about in there is what? Hope and wellness as it relates to this gospel message. So that needs to be put in there so we can now make sure we align ourselves to what? To our divisional message, okay? Then number two, that all of his North uh, American Division Union Ministry Partners uh, if you notice now, he took out uh, ministry directors and all of these folk. Uh, we, we know who they are, but guess what? When it comes down to prayer and working together, we're all partners. And, and titles are there, but titles are not, are not so much important. And friends, we, we help make to pray, to pray, this, this thing we call a movement, uh, that will sweep the North America for the kingdom of God. That's, that's kind of his mission, his, his, his goal, his direction that he wanted to put out that, that, that underlines uh, this logo. Now, from a logo perspective, let me come close to it. Let me come close to it uh, so you kind of see this part of it right here, uh, and we'll see can we expand it, is right in the middle. It's, 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 it's a lot of hands. It's about four or five hands in, in the middle. If you open it up kind of wide, you'll see that. So that means we're working hand in hand together uh, to, to, to sweep North America for the kingdom of God. And then he says, he says, and he's going to find a way to add this to the logo the way the way he would like it designed with your help is that the Seventh-day Adventist Church will be known as a church, uh, as a people uh, that prays, that prays, that prays, that prays. Now with that, let's kind of talk about some of the components of it, some of the components of it. You heard me talk about the colors. You heard me talk about the colors, the colors. Uh, Pathfinder people, you, you, you should be familiar with these colors, but uh, these colors are pr pretty much synonymous with the Bible as well as uh, through many things that we do, the J, which, and I missed this yesterday, I missed this yesterday, this says, just claim it. This carries this part here. Become instruments, become instruments uh, for the gospel grace of hope and wholeness to what? To claim this message and then do what? Carry it to the world. So that's what the JCI stands for. Just claim it. Just claim it to the world. J, the color blue, loyalty. God is loyal to us. The color red in the sea, the blood of Christ. And then the uh, I being gold, 
we're tried in the fire. We're, we're, we're like fine gold, precious gold. So that's kind of the color scheme. That's kind of what the letters mean. And then, of course, the two pray basically kind of start with the premise of everybody, as he says, everybody got to pray. Every, and we've been talking about that in here, is that everybody got to do what? Come together and pray together. And then as we come together and pray together, we create communities, get in these communities. And then these communities become what? Cities. Cities. <coughs> countries. And all these different things. But we understand around these cities is a darkness. The world is dark. That's why the light, the flame, got to be taken to them. Because God is the light of the world. So that's kind of the premise of how this logo is looked at and interpreted. Um, typically, I can, I, can, I can tell you from experience, and you're going to experience it. When youth and young adults used to wear these shirts, and Pastor Moody can kind of attest to this and add value to this, when, when you put that shirt on, anywhere you go with this shirt, when you define it to people, believe me, it becomes an identifiable mark. So the shirts that you're wearing now, some of you wear, I can guarantee you when you go back, people are going to want to know where you get this shirt from. And we will get it for them because this becomes the identifying mark to who we are, what we want to be as a people of God, carrying God's message of hope and wholeness to the world, to the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. Anybody want to add something to that? Anybody Why did we have black shirts yesterday? Because blue's my color. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I would think it had something to do with darkness. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it, it, probably, it probably had something to do with the printer telling us that the, the logo uh, reflected better on a dark shirt. But I will say, and, and I think Pastor Moody can, can kind of add value to this too, we do have these, sometimes these shirts are printed in different colors, of white and blue and, and so on and so forth. I'll but as the light, of, I know, the light of the color... The, the logo tends to kind of fade to the background. So most of the time, you're going to see this shirt kind of in a black. But it's not locked into black. And no, it, it doesn't reflect. It doesn't reflect darkness because I can assure you. The printer, he didn't know. The printer didn't know. Yes? Question. The numeral two, what's behind that? I, I can see that going several ways, but maybe I missed it. Two people. Okay, that's what I wanted to be clear about. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not hearing that in any of the meaning of the logo. So it's two people coming to pray together for the community? Where everybody got to pray. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just claim it is from the, I mean, we used to have the um, I don't know if we still do, but the academies would send kids to just what, claim it. The convention? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So is that a carryover from those conventions to take us back to that thought? It, it, it's not a carryover from the convention. It was the foundation for those young people to understand why you're at this convention. Everything that we will do in those conventions, and Steve, I need you to chime on those and, and help us, is that when you, when you leave here, we want you to go what? And claim it to the world. So the convention wasn't so much defined as just claim it. The theory, the, the thing, the understanding that when you come, when you leave, is to claim it back to the world. Talk with me. The youth one was really a, a big gathering and a big event, and a lot of uh, people from smaller churches saw they were part of something bigger. Yeah. The same JCI idea here is actually reversing now. So it's going from the division to the local church, not to the big event. So don't confuse the JCI. Both of them are prayer related, but the model for the JCI for young people was come to the big gathering and go out empowered. But what you're having right now with this to pray JCI community conference is don't come to the big event. It's what some of you have said. Do it in the local church. So that's why instead of trying to get a thousand people for yesterday, we went to a local church and had it happen in the local church. So that that's the difference with this. And, and, and stand right there for a minute, Steve. Let's go somewhere. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. I want to introduce this. We can pick it back this together. I'm going to show you something. And then Steve going to kind of Continue with me. Uh, part of uh, Pastor Black's mission and goal and desire that he wanted to push this out to us, that, the, that, that in 218, the 2P, two 2 pray, he want 100 churches to, to, to embrace uh, what you saw yesterday and, and carry this to your church. And, and, and basically, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, put it in a framework that it, that it works, the model works for you. 
contextualize. It works for you. And then he says, in 2, 19, 1,000. He says, that's a lot of number, but think about this. What, what he's saying is that the, the, this 100 here now becomes 100 down here. So it's their first annual, so that becomes their what? Their second annual, and then it becomes their third annual. And we're going to come back to that other slide in a second. Now watch this, watch this. When we went into uh, uh, this event uh, 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 last, this past weekend, we had zero basically confirmed. We had some potentials. We had, had some potentials. Uh, I, put, I, I announced that if you were interested in this, you want to bring this to your church, see Diane. Diane was coming to me like every four or five minutes, and boom, that's the result of what happened. And they're still coming. So, and we, and we want you to say, hey, listen, you know, I, we like what we saw. What a powerful experience. We want to explore it. What we want to do is get you, get, get you on the list so we can contact you and begin to explore this. So right now, these are confirmed numbers. These are not exploratory numbers. In the, in the Atlantic Union, there are two that says, come to us. Uh, there is one in Columbia Union, four in Lake Union, uh, three in Columbia Union, Quebec, uh, Southwestern Union, and I think I got Elaine, you know, that twice. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's so, good. Let's, it's good. so let's so let's look at let's just look at briefly, briefly, briefly some of these spots, and then we'll come back to that slide so he can add some more value to it. I won't go through them. You can kind of see them yourself. These are these are folk that were sitting, a ministry that was sitting in that audience, sitting in that audience that were blessed by whatever happened in there. And not so much what Steve, myself, or Rowan was doing, and, and I, I, I don't want to overlook her, because you saw her in the background, but believe me, she was doing a lot of things in the background, uh, and Diane, and from that, boom. And the biggest thing that came out of this, every one of these are important, every one of these is important, and believe me, we, I, I, I'm, I'm all for it, I'm all, I'm all dug in. But uh, I see Pastor Moody talking to Diane right now, guess what, they're the next one. They're the next one. But then here's another one. Diane came to me. She says, guess what, Paula? Guess what, Paula? You're going to like this. And I shared this with Pastor Black last night, and he woke up this morning at 6 o'clock talking about it. This camp meeting uh, in 2019 is asking this particular ministry to come to their camp meeting in 2019, already scheduled, and for the entire week, wow. this program will, that will be their programming for the week. And watch this. This is not youth and young adult ministry uh wherever they this is for this is for the entire campground that's how big that so when i shared this with him the first thing that pastor black says is done so this is just how big this movement is in terms of people latching on to those steps in conversion last slide i'm coming back oakwood university i added that this morning i added that this morning i added it because pastor black said oh you missing one and i said what he says, Oakwood University won it now, July 12 and 13, and not so much in the university, the, 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 the university itself, which encompasses the university, but the church itself, they won it now, and it's going to them now. So those things are happening, and they're big. Uh, Pastor Brian is sitting here. I go back right quick. You know, uh, I, I, I guess Diane and Pastor Brian will have to kind of kind of tug a war a little bit, because guess what? He was next. So <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? And, 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 and although you saw us up there as resources, I like what he says. This is a local church, local church environment. So it's contextualized to the local church. I'm going to go back to that slide, but you kind of had to go back. I just wanted to show you this in terms of what he was saying. I don't have more to say on that, but I will say this about the next slide. Okay. Yes. Yeah. If I'm a conference or union prayer ministry uh, director, I probably already have things going. I would look at what happened uh, this week and what you experienced, and my mind would go one of two ways, and it might go both ways. One would be, I want this package to come, and I have a place where I want to do it. I think that I might pick a place, and I might invite five or ten other churches to send somebody to come and experience this so they can see if they could do this the next year in their church. And that would be the multiplication kind of thing. I wouldn't try to say, let's try to get 10 churches, the whole church to come to one and just fill it up. That, that's losing that community concept again that we want the prayer ministry to continue. But bring in, like, we were representatives this last weekend. How much would that cost? 
Never thrilled to have that answer. Well, you don't have that. I, I don't know that. And uh, Diane, do you know right off? So that would be something to ask the division. Yeah, what, what's the cost for that? And um, one of the things is it's going to be cheaper than doing a retreat because you're doing it in a local church. So you don't have the expense that yes, comes with a retreat. To a local church. Yes. It's almost free except for resources. Yes, yes. I can speak to some of it. Let me speak to some of it because I, I've worked with uh, the Phil in Church for you know two and a half years to bring uh, this uh, ministry to them. Uh, how much did it cost? Outside of the NAD people that you saw there, extract that out. It was free to them because they did all of that. Did you eat good? Yeah. yeah. Those ladies, they, they they prepared that food, so you know they, they didn't go out and, and, and charge anybody to cater that. They did that in their homes. Uh, the HH, uh, the, the Hinsdale Academy, uh, young people who came and did those skits and all that kind of stuff, those are their children. Those are their kids who go to this school, that go to this church. The, the, the bulletin and all those things that you saw, and I got samples if people want to take some back. It was a beautiful bulletin, and I got plenty of samples, but that's probably the best I've seen so far. You know, they created this bulletin. So basically, it was their church service. We just came in. Now, one of the things that I want to understand, you to understand why we came in. So let's go to the last slide right quick. Let's go to this last slide right quick. Because we can piggyback up right here, right here, right here, right here. We can put all of this together. There is a JC, excuse me, a two pray uh, rally type of thing, which basically gives you those four, seven steps, or a conference. That was a conference yesterday that involved the training, the training part of it. So what Pastor Black wanted. Uh, everyone to see, especially uh, the proud leaders, is that here is the model for it. So that's why Steve was brought in. That's why I was brought in. And some of the others were brought in. Because we have embraced the concept. So we wanted to make sure you clearly seen how it works. But if all of a sudden you don't want it to be a training site, you don't have to bring us out. You follow? You now develop yourself. We're connected with you. We'll be connected with you, and we'd be love, we'd love to come. you got to get on this calendar right now. We'd love to come. But it could be exactly how you basically contextualize it, and then we, we'll be conversing via phone, email, whatever the case may be, and it becomes your worship service, your program for that particular week. But if you're saying, hey, I, 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 wanna, I want my other conference folk to, to, to see this, other churches, then yes, we would suggest it become now a training site, you follow, and then now... The budget now could increase because now you're bringing others out to help you deliver that message. Kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. Again, if I were a conference or a union prayer ministry director, I'd be saying, does this fit in with the overall ministry that I'm doing? Is this a resource for us? Uh, another possibility would be to say, um, well, I, I don't want the whole package, but I like the way they did that P-R-A-Y prayer room thing on Friday night, so I'm just going to do that with something I'm already doing. So I'm just going to, we all draw from all kinds of sources. So there may have been things you experience that you just add to what you're already doing. But the whole package is something that the division is saying, here's something you could do, uh, and maybe that can help expand your, your ministry. You know, and, and let me just say, uh, she didn't just stand up and just raise her hand. Uh, we, Kalila, raise your hand back there. She was part of the team. And uh, at my home, as we kind of planning uh, what we were going to kind of work through, uh, for those particular days, we she brought something to the table that was phenomenal. And so I can assure you, she's filled with uh, illustrations about prayer and examples of things like that. Because one of the ones that was phenomenal, folk, I'm, I'm telling you when, you, when you took that little pen that people have taken to, I mean, well, the stuff, stuff just stopped walking away in that place. <laughs> and, and you write on, and you write on the, a cloth, and then you drop it in the water, and then your sins are just, that, that illustration, and then you take it back there and, and, and they drop. That was, that, was, that was her illustration. So my point is, you don't have to invent some of these things beyond the creativity you have. A lot of these resources are available. They are out there. So that when, depending on where you want to go in your budgetary type situation, I can assure you around the division, there are folks out there uh, that's ready to assist you, come with you. Uh, and believe me, I'm pretty sure that Pastor Black would love to, to be introduced to others. That, that, that have some of those same gifts that you saw yesterday. Uh, anything you want to add? Anything you want to add? Yes. What do I have to do to become eligible to be, I mean, I can sign up. Yes. But to have access to the logo, what kind of, what kind of quality control are you going to expect 
from a conference prayer leader if he decides to sign up for one of these things. So I have to, uh, is it a, a speaker list? I bring my own speakers. I've gotten, I've gotten the idea that I can kind of do my own thing. But I suspect that there's a line beyond which it's no longer pray JC. Uh, pray, absolutely, pray absolutely, absolutely, and it's something else. So yes, can you yes. tell me where that line is? Well, you know, I, I, I honestly, uh, I, I think that's being defined, and and, and 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 I know Pastor Black is recording that. That's a very critical question. Amen. So beyond the record, him and I will discuss that even today, so we can get something out uh, to help if, if people are deciding on it and making that decision. I may be stepping out of my bounds here. Okay, uh -oh. uh, so James, make sure you get this. Um, I think that if you're going to do to pray JCI and use the logo and stuff like that, then the expectation is that you're doing this in conjunction with the division. Yes. If you're going to take some of these ideas on your own and do it with whatever it is your thing that you're doing, then, then you're on your own. But well, I understand that. Okay. The, the one, once these people with these names, they will then be linked to the division office to go right. ahead and set out what the items are going to be. Now, I know that people are leaving. I see some more. I know I'm going to have to go... Um, Help, help us understand how much more time, because we have a few things left on the agenda. How many need to go? It's 12.20. How many need to go either now or within the next 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Okay. And how many can stay for another half an hour? So we'll, we'll, we'll expedite the critical ones. All right. Okay. All right. And you know, just one more idea. One more point, not idea. One more thought. Just kind of answer to your question. I was posed with the question yesterday. I'm standing because I want to kind of refer to this, then I'll come back down. A person says, Paulette, when we print this shirt with the logo on the front, and you've seen me says this kind of, in a way, until Pastor Brad uh, expanded with you guys, it brands mm -hmm. the model. Mm -hmm. Can we put what we want on the back? And I might be stepping out of my bounds, but we discussed <laughs> this with Pastor Black. If I'm stepping out of my bounds, you'll tell me probably in about a half hour. The answer was no. Because I agree with him that if you place something else on the back, as good as it may be, as fine as it may be, we can't control what's on the back. So then it changes, it changes the model itself. So the shirt, if you look at it, that's the brand and there's nothing else to it. The only other thing that we've seen with the shirt sometime, and it has a little value to cost, we would put the logo or something sometime on the sleeve. So, so these are things, yes, in answering those questions, yes, I do agree and do feel that I think we're on the right track, that that brand model has to stay intact because it does represent the divisional, the Office of Prayer Ministry. Okay. Yes. So the, but you can customize it to your particular church. Yes. The NAD package includes the personnel that are here this weekend from whatever distance, like yes. Yes. The West Coast and you from here. Yes. It includes the five or six. Uh, and, and a few more. So yes, there, there is there is an NAD group, okay, that was directly representing his office, and you probably seen most of those folks. You probably seen me running around before I was really introduced. And then there was a church model, and I think you probably just kind of reflect back. You kind of say these, these these were the church the church model. So there were two groups. The group that was represented the church. I don't know what they paid for it, but all I can all I can say to you, based on the pastor and the elder, they were they were just ecstatic. So, you know, this is, their words were, this is just what we do on Sabbath. Same bulletin, all these little different things. So to them, that's that value. The cost of bringing us is in the office. Now, it could very well be delivered to the church in terms of what assistance, what financial support is provided there. Okay? My wife says cut it off. All right. Okay. I'm, shut, I'm shutting down. You're shutting down. Okay. All right. Okay. All right.